Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to break down this Jimi Hendrix-inspired rhythm and lead. It's fairly easy to play, easy to follow along with, and it's played over a stripped-down jam track. It's just bass and drums. And so you're going to have to do all the guitar work, all the rhythm, all the lead stuff, and fill in all those spaces. It makes you really work harder when you're playing along with a trio like that. It's great from an instructional standpoint. So there's going to be a lot of these licks that you're going to learn, and you'll see that they're really not that difficult to play, and you can start using them in your own playing when you improvise. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second video and download the tablature and the MP3 jam tracks, which I have in multiple tempos, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP365. All right, so we're going to be looking at Jimi Hendrix this week, and I realize there's a lot of Hendrix uh, purists out there that are probably going to rip me and say, that's not how he would do it. He tunes down a half step, and he uses this kind of overdrive and whatever. Uh, I'm not a Hendrix purist by any means, but I have a huge uh, appreciation for him. And I, uh, there were, I went through a big phase in my 20s where I was like trying to do everything like Hendrix. And so I was, you know, I studied him quite a bit. Uh, when I came up with this uh, lesson material, I didn't listen to anything. Uh, I just wanted to pull from what I kind of, what's already there, you know, like the Hendrix style licks that I, uh, you know, use, like the seven sharp nine chord and all that Hendrix stuff. And so that's what this is. It's kind of a cliche Hendrix style lesson. Now, I used to do a lot more of these in the style of lessons of different artists like Keith Richards and Eric Clapton and people, but I haven't done it in a while, and I've just kind of gravitated away from that. And the reason for that is it's just it's a lot more work to try and sound like somebody else. And I've found through the years I've kind of got my own thing, and it's just sort of a hybrid of all these different artists that I like. So, uh, so kind of keep that in mind. You don't always have to sound like somebody else. You can take little pieces from everybody else and kind of, you know, piece it together, and and come up with your own thing. But it's good to have some Hendrix in whatever you do. And so uh, let's talk about tone real quick. This is uh, obviously a Fender Stratocaster, and I'm on the bridge pickup. I have the tone and the volume all the way up for this. And I'm playing through a Kemper Profiler, which is just off camera here, and I'm using a Evil Robot uh, amp profile, kind of a weird amp name. You know, it's got all these different amps. I was going to do the Marshall thing, but then it was just too heavy. And I found this Evil Robot amp, and it actually had the right amount of overdrive for what I, was do I wanted to do. I wanted it to sound heavy, kind of Hendrixy, but but be clear enough that I could use it from an instructional standpoint. So it's got to have both of those uh, features for this lesson anyway. So that's what I'm using. <clears throat> um, but you can dial that in with any amp. You can use uh, you know, an overdrive pedal if you don't have overdrive on your amp. A Tube Screamer, a Boss BD2, something like that. This is not super complicated tone. There's also a little bit of reverb in there. Here's what it sounds like. Nice little breakup. Um, but I'm going to dial it back a little bit uh, so you can hear everything clearly as we go through the instruction. All right, so that's the tone setup that I'm using. Simple, just overdrive. Now let's talk about this song. This is played in the key of E, and it starts off, and by the way, I'm in standard tuning. I realize Hendrix would play uh, a half step down. He'd tune everything down. Uh, we're in standard here for this. So you start off with this. That's the first thing we're going to learn. And it's got this, you know, this is an infectious groove that once you learn this, it sounds great, even without the jam track, just to sit around and do that actually sounds great on acoustic guitar as well. But I start off by playing an E chord. I hit the bottom, with a downstroke, hit the bottom two strings, bottom three strings. Like that bottom, that would be the power chord, E power chord. And then an upstroke on strings one and two. So you have, that's the first part. And then, I go to the 3rd fret 3rd string with a downstroke, and when I hit that, I push it sharp just a little bit. And then another upstroke on the 1 string. Alright, so let's piece it all together. So we have... And then, I have this. That's the 3rd string, the open 3rd string, and a series of hammer-ons to the 1st fret on the 3rd string. Now, if we look at what's going on here, this note, this note, this note, these are all notes in the E7 chord. So if I were to put a chord behind everything we're doing here, it'd just be an E7 chord. And these are all just, it's kind of just a way of dancing around that E7 chord. Okay, now the only other part to that 
is this. So we're gonna put that on. So we're gonna go back to the open sixth string, third fret, uh, sixth string, with a, pulling it sharp a little bit. And then we come up here to the second fret on the fourth string, and that's the open fourth string. And, and what I do, I'm doing that little hammer-on uh, pull-off thing. Or you can just go, just do one hammer-on. Sometimes I'll do it this way. Um, and sometimes I'll go. And you know, if you watch Hendrix play, um, obviously he's playing it like this, but um, he does these little, those little things a lot. I don't know what you call those. Hammer-on pull-offs, I guess. So backing up. got a loop and I want you to just loop that over and over again take whatever tempo you want don't play along with the jam track at the beginning yet if you're not comfortable with it just try and do it by yourself this really does sound pretty good on its own and I do have two versions of the jam track so there's a slower version if you want to start with that okay so let's look at some variations on that so one thing you could do Notice that's a little different. The only difference is, instead of going like that, I went, I hung out on that third fret second string, and then went to that little, uh, you know, third string. I, I skipped the first string on that one. So that's one variation. And then the other variation, which I've just mentioned, is instead of going, you go, all right, so now you've got these two parts and you can put them together and play through the first part of this. It sounds like this. All right, so now that we've got that established, we're gonna start layering on top of that. So we can think of that as the bass line. And uh, the third time through, we're gonna throw in a lick and we're gonna start throwing in some E minor pentatonic licks because we're playing in the key of E. So from the beginning we have Now watch this. So I came up here now. So I'm thinking E minor pentatonic pattern 1, right? There's your E chord if you were to play it up here, an octave higher than down here. And so that lick lives right up here in pattern one of that minor pentatonic scale. We're going to put one finger on the 12th fret first string, and then we're going to come to the 15th fret second string, and we're going to bend into that. Now that's something Hendrix would do quite a bit, where he would bend to this note that he's already playing. So you get this, and, and sometimes you hear artists go, kind of walk it up and down and play a solo using that technique. So you might experiment with that. But that's what it's going on there. Then you release it. And then you walk down 12, 12th fret 2nd string, uh, 14th fret 3rd string, 12th fret 3rd string. And when you get to that 12th fret 3rd string, this is a key, to, and it's a, it's a small nuance, but it makes a big difference. When you play that vibrato, don't play it right on the note, push it sharp. Hear that difference? And now when I listen to Albert King and, and artists like that, some of these blues guys, and that's probably where he got that idea, um, they would do that. They would take it from the minor and push it towards the major, and, and but not go all the way. You're sort of settling halfway and you get this kind of uneasy feeling. So that's what's going on with that. Okay, so from the beginning. Notice after that? We're gonna come right back to that. What's nice about that lick is it starts on that open sixth string. So I have enough time to get my hand from this position all the way back down there. That's just that same lick that we've played there. And then we go back to the sixth string. And then I went another lick. It's the same kind of thing that we did down here, but now we're doing it an octave lower. So now I'm playing an E minor pentatonic scale 
pattern one, but we're playing it down here. So our nut is, you know, re represents what the 12th fret was up here. So I want... So that's a full bend on the second fret, third string. And actually it's okay to hit the B string, the open B string as well. Because you're already bending to that note, right? And then we go back to that lick again. So notice that that lick keeps happening. Um, so basically we've kind of just changed the, it, we've gone to more of a call and response. Once we came up here, this would be like the call and then the response. Then the call, response, okay? Um, all right, let's back it up from the beginning and play up to that point uh, and then we'll learn the, the next thing. Now this is not easy to do. This is probably the hardest part in this whole thing just because it requires a ton of pressure. And so what I'm doing is I'm using my middle finger. I find that to be easiest. Oh, you could use your ring finger. But I'm on the third fret second string. Actually ring finger works better. Uh, third fret second string and I'm doing two full bends. So you're trying to hit this note, which would be fifth fret second string. So you start with that. And then back to the third fret second string by itself, and then a bend and vibrato. Man, is that hard. Just because you're so close to the, the nut down here that the tension is incredibly high. Now, if I had a tremolo, that would probably be the smarter way to do that, and probably the way Hendrix would have done it. You know, that kind of thing. But I don't have one on this guitar. Um, and so I like to try and do as much as I can with my left hand. That's just sort of my my, my way of doing it. And you can see while I'm playing that vibrato and that bend, I'm actually bumping the third string and it's kind of okay. It's like you can tell that there's strain going on. It sounds like somebody singing and their voice is breaking. Right there. Okay, I'm not going to do that anymore because I'll kill my fingers. Uh, but after that I went... Easy lick to play and it's super powerful because it crescendos. So we're starting uh, by playing uh, just strings two and three. I've got my middle finger on the fourth fret third string. My index finger is on the third fret second string. Now this is just pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale for E. It's these two notes, right? And you've probably played this lick quite a bit if you've played any blues. So, uh, what we do is we're doing triplets. We're going one, two, three, one, two, three. We do two of those, and then the, the third and the fourth, we're going to play the same thing, but we're going to also include the one string, the open, the open E string. So it goes like this. See how it starts off low and it builds to this crescendo? And you'll hear that when you play along with the jam track, that the, the hi-hat opens up and it starts to... You're building to get to the four chord. And then we go to the A, which is the four chord. And to do that, I just slid up here to the fourth fret, sixth string with my ring finger. And then I played the A chord uh, by barring on here on the second fret. Now I'm playing strings five, four, and three. It's like an A power chord. So that's the timing of it. Now after that, we're now we're into the four chord and I played. Sounds like this. Um, and so I'm sliding up. Now, what I'm thinking about, just so you can you can get in the right visualization here, thinking about the A chord up here. That's where we bar on the fifth fret. This is the A major bar chord, E chord shape. And I'm thinking about minor pentatonic scale pattern one. Uh, but but to get into it, I'm going to play the A triad. So that's the 6th uh, fret 3rd string, 5th fret 2nd string, 5th fret 1st string. That's that little triad there. 
but then I come down to this 8th fret 2nd string and play that and then back to the 5th fret 1st string. Now this note works so well because that would be like an A7 chord, right? Anytime you work in that dominant 7 or the flat 7 if you're playing the major scale you play up to the 7 interval and you flat the 7. That's what that note is. You can always work that in to get that bluesy tone. Alright, so let's back up to the beginning of the A part. We have... Now notice I go back to that, that, that bass part. And after that I went... Now let's look at this. Now that's just A minor pentatonic scale pattern 1. So I'm just going between the 5th fret and the 7th fret on the 4th string. And you can see that that's just a series of pull-offs, and the pull-off is what keeps it sustaining. So you just anchor your finger there on the 5th fret, and you just go like this. It's really not that difficult. You can do it on acoustic guitar as well. Now some people I've seen use their uh, index finger and their uh, middle finger. You just have to kind of pick which one's easier. For me, it's easier to use my ring finger. So I did that, and then I jumped down to the fifth string. Not very creative, but you know, it's it it serves it serves its purpose in sounding like Hendrix, I guess. And then we're gonna do a slide from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the sixth string. So you can see everything we've just done there has been 5th fret to 7th fret on the 4th string, 5th string, 6th string. And then we're going to go back 5th fret to the 7th fret on the 5th string. And then hit that low E string. Once we hit the low E string, I can take my hand out of this position go into this next chord. So now we're going back to the one chord and play along with everything. In fact, I'm going to play along with a slow version of the jam track so that you can hear everything in context up to that point. Okay, so the last part we're going to cover in this video is... Is that kind of a, you know, it goes, it almost switches uh, out of the shuffle and goes into a straight beat there. It's kind of a cool sound. Uh, but the chord that I'm playing is that uh, E7 uh, sharp 9 chord. And that's a, that's, a lot of people call that the Hendrix chord. Uh, because you hear it in... I think of like purple haze it's in there uh, but but it's it, the, to play the chord uh, I'll show you two different voicings for it uh, the one that we're gonna use uh, is down here where I play uh, b both uh, the first and second string on the third fret with my pinky and ring finger and then I go to the first fret third string with my index finger kind of a weird sound middle finger goes down on the second fret fourth string and that's the E7 sharp 9. The other way that uh, you'll see that chord played would be up here. It's the same exact chord, but you just think of like your E7 shape, right? But then you add your pinky here to the 8th fret 2nd string. That's another way you can play that chord. But I like the sound of that when I went... So it's like... Uh, Six string and then two strums of that chord and then repeat it. I'm not sure where I got that. That's either Stevie Ray Vaughan or Hendrix. That's something I've heard in, in one of you know one of the two of those guys have done that. And then so look at this. We go right back to that lick, the same lick we uh, use in the beginning. And then to come out of that. Open one string, 
third fret, second string, back to the open one string. Now I'm actually going to end this part one video there. There's there's a whole other uh, piece that we're going to save for the part two video. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll save that for uh, premium members. And if you're not a premium member, look into it. I like to say that at the end of these um, and encourage you to check it out because it's a great value. You have the jam tracks, you have all the videos, you have the tablature, everything you need, but not just for this lesson, but for all of them. I've got hundreds of lessons like this. Okay, so let me back up and play along with a slow version of the jam track. We'll play up to that point and then I'll see you in part two.